Today we're going to take a look at Rocky Linux. This is a distribution that actually has a really good chance of becoming a very widely used GNU Linux distro. Um, it's developed by the co-founder of CentOS, and you can pretty much think of it as the replacement of CentOS, or at least the spiritual successor to CentOS. Uh, now, you've probably heard of CentOS if you've been into Linux for a couple of years now. Uh, it's one of, or at least it was, one of the more widely used distros. In fact, it probably still is one of the more widely used distros. Uh, it stands for the Community Enterprise Operating System. So this was a community-driven GNU slash Linux distro aimed at enterprises. It's also one of the only fully free distributions that officially supports uh, certain softwares like DaVinci Resolve. Um, and this is just an example that I thought of. There's many cases of software like this on Linux uh, where they say that they're only officially supported on Red Hat and CentOS. And the reason for that is generally, well, we'll talk about the reason why CentOS gets added on, but Red Hat, uh, generally they do more testing uh, for softwares or they'll work with these companies more to uh, get their software compatible with Linux. And then they're just gonna say that this is the only one that it's officially supported on. But like in the case of DaVinci Resolve, this will work on pretty much any distro. And usually that's the case. So you can imagine if you're new to Linux um, or you just don't want to deal with a whole lot of hassle and you're mostly just wanting to use a certain piece of software that you're probably just going to look up what distro this software works on. And in the case of DaVinci Resolve, that's going to tell you uh, that it works for Red Hat and CentOS. Now, the whole reason that I'm talking about CentOS so much and talking about it in the past tense is because CentOS has reached end of life. Red Hat, which acquired CentOS a few years ago, is now abandoning the project. Uh, CentOS 8 is going to lose support by, I believe, the end of 2021, and then CentOS by the end of 2024, for some reason. Uh, and naturally, this has a lot of people really annoyed. So if you don't really know sort of like the whole background to CentOS and why it's so popular and why it's such a big deal, um, CentOS is downstream from both Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So whenever a package is released or a new version of a package is released, it's going to have been tested by Fedora's user community, which is huge. Um, Fedora is probably one of the distros that people are most using as a desktop distro. Uh, and then it's going to also be tested by Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is uh, basically the distro that dominates the enterprise space. Maybe Debian has slightly more market share than them. I don't know. But generally, uh, enterprises are going to be using Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So packages and versions of packages are going to go through all of the testing of those two distributions, and they're going to pretty much find all the bugs before something reaches CentOS. So this distro uh, obviously isn't going to be as up to date, but it's going to be very, very stable. Now there is CentOS Stream, which actually has access to newer packages. So this was a new project that was created by Red Hat to uh, sort of be the replacement of CentOS and take its place. But the thing about CentOS Stream, which they tell you right here, is that it tracks just ahead of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So basically, this is upstream. This is now another guinea pig for uh, Red Hat. So basically Red Hat is in the position that CentOS was, and now all of their packages are going to be filtered through Fedora and then uh, through CentOS Stream. So that is where Rocky Linux comes into play. So this is pretty much back in the same position um, as CentOS. So it's uh, downstream from Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, and it's a bit more independent, so it's not uh, sponsored by Red Hat. It's not owned by Red Hat in any way. So, you know, Red Hat can't exactly go and kill it off. So to get started with it, you would go ahead to rockylinux.org and click on download. Uh, now there's a couple different versions. There's the minimal, which is pretty much a headless version of it. So this is what you would most likely want to run if you're going to use it as a server. And then there is the DVD, 
Uh, so this is the much bigger image, uh, pretty much the desktop image. That's what I'm using right here. Uh, so yeah, very, very similar to CentOS, if you've ever used that before. Um, it comes with GNOME as your desktop environment. And as you can see, it's a much older version of GNOME. So 3.32, I believe that that was released back in 2019. Uh, so yeah, older version of GNOME, but that's kind of the point of Rocky since it's downstream from RHEL. Um, like if we go into our packages, for example, LibreOffice Writer, I'm sure this is a much older version. Yeah, so like this version is about a year old, at least, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we go take a look at Firefox. This is the ESR of it. So yeah, your packages are gonna be older, but they're going to be much more stable. Um, we also have, well, here, I'll just show you all the uh, applications that it comes with. Not a whole lot. You're definitely going to want to go into the software repository and start uh, adding in some more. Um, now, another thing that you can do and this works the same way on CentOS. Pretty much every like tutorial and every guide that existed for CentOS, you can apply it to Rocky Linux as well. So your flat packs to set them up, uh, you could just go to CentOS or flatpack.org uh, forward slash setup forward slash CentOS. And then all you have to do is install the Flathub repository file. Um, so I already have it installed on uh, my system to demo here. And then um, in your software, you would just want to update it. And you should also have the Flathub repository added here. You can also add um, more repositories to install newer versions of software if you want, if you don't want to use really, really old versions. Uh, so yeah, after you install the Flatpak, then you'll be able to use like, um, I think, these here are part of Flatpak, if I'm not mistaken, like the Proton Mail. I'm pretty sure this is a Flatpak. Yeah, Flathub. So you can see that that's working. Uh, now, of course, with Flatpaks, they add a whole lot of bloat to your system. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're, you might end up getting like duplicate dependencies installed and things like that. So yeah, Rocky Linux, it's basically CentOS has risen from the ashes. Um, now, personally, I probably won't be using CentOS a whole lot. Like usually I prefer to use um, Debian for my Linux servers. Uh, but let me know if any of you guys are using CentOS, whether it's as a desktop or as a server, if it really, or Rocky Linux rather, if you were using CentOS and then you end up switching to Rocky Linux, uh, is it really a super easy transition? Because that's what I'm seeing everybody say about this is, uh, um, you know, literally every guide and every tutorial that existed for CentOS works for Rocky. Um, apparently there's even a migration script that you can run if you have an existing CentOS system that'll basically turn it into a Rocky Linux. Um, I haven't tested that out yet, but let me know if you guys are interested in that, if you guys are running uh, CentOS and want more advice on migrating to Rocky.